everyone, it's Stacy. I'm getting ready to prepare some of these beautiful cabbages to go into the freezer for use this winter. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love to grow vegetables. I love to play in the dirt. I love to just grow all kinds of things, flowers and everything. And I love to try to save some of the vegetables that we get in the summer uh, for use throughout the winter because, you know, I think that stuff that we get fresh is uh, a lot better than what some of the things are that are out of season that we get from the grocery store. So I went to an Amish market this morning and I got these four huge heads of cabbage and I'm going to pre prepare them and put them in the freezer and I'm going to show you how to go about preparing raw cabbage for freezing. Um, I also had gotten, um, not this avocado, I've got these um, little tomatoes over here from my garden and um, basically all these tomatoes except for the little avocado that came from the grocery store and then I also have these bell peppers and the eggplant that came from the Amish store I'm going to put these peppers in the freezer I have a bunch of pepper plants but they're not really doing very well right now um, they have a lot of flowers but they're not setting fruit um, so I want to make sure I have plenty of bell peppers uh, for this winter. I make a whole lot of soups and I want to make sure that I have plenty of different types of vegetables to go into the soups, um, especially cabbage and bell peppers and onions. I'm also going to try freezing tomatoes this year. I've canned them before, but I'm going to try freezing some. I'm not going to do that today, but I have like eight tomato plants and I'm thinking I'm going to have a bumper crop. So I want to make sure that I'm prepared for that. So uh, over here, I also have some more cabbage. This cabbage came from my mother-in-law and her husband's garden. It's a different type of cabbage. You'll notice that this is more of, I don't know, it's like an oddly shaped cabbage. The head on this is a lot looser than the dense round cabbage like I just showed you. Uh, these squash and peppers came out of my garden. I'm gonna be cooking this cabbage tonight and uh, making some fried green tomatoes but low carb i'll be doing that with pork rinds and parmesan cheese and then baking them in the oven you can also do that in an air fryer and i'll make a video on that sometime but uh, i've also got these squash out of the garden and i've got two more that should be ready tomorrow and maybe a zucchini so we might have those tomorrow so i'm going to show you how to prepare your cabbage for the freezer and you'll see I have a big stock pot here. This is just a stock pot that I bought like from Walmart or Target. Um, I'm not sure the size of it, but it's just like the standard stock pot. It might be two gallons. Um, I normally make soup in it, but I'm going to use it today for blanching. I have my trusty old stove set on the spot between medium high and high. And then I also have this big bowl of ice water over here that I have my metal ladle in here um, that has the slotted um, cup there and I'm going to use that um, after I blanch my cabbage I'm going to dunk it into the ice water bath to stop it from cooking and then I'm going to use the um, the scoop to get the cabbage out of there uh, and then it'll be just about ready we'll have to dry it off and then it'll be ready to package but you don't have to blanch your cabbage. You can freeze it without blanching it. Um, but if you're going to freeze it for longer than like two or three months, I highly recommend that you do blanch it uh, just because it extends the life of your cabbage in the freezer. Now, since I'm preparing this for winter, I know that it's going to be in my freezer for several months. I usually use cabbage once or twice a week. So I'm hoping to get about 20 to 24 bags, um, gallon sized, of cabbage into my deep freezer for the winter. So I'm hoping that these four big heads over here are going to be a good start. Now with blanching, I'm only going to want to do it for about uh, two minutes, depending on how I cut it up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get my heads of cabbage ready. I've got this one here. 
just to start off, we have to remove these outer leaves. And if you can see here, it rained yesterday, so there's a lot of moisture between these leaves. So I'm going to peel off like the top layer of these leaves on all of these heads. And then I'm going to give them a good rinse, and then I'll get back with you. So I have torn some of the outer leaves off of this particular head of cabbage. And as you can see, some sort of a cabbage worm or something has gotten a hold of this. So there's probably going to be some parts of this I'm not going to be able to use. But this is a danger of, uh, you know, well, not really a danger, but this is kind of something that you come to expect whenever you have something fresh grown from a farm locally or even yourself versus what comes from the grocery store. Um, at the grocery store, a lot of times they'll just have the big indoor growing and so they don't get a lot of worms and insects, but this is not a big deal. We'll just work around it. I just want to show it to you. You know, this is not a deal breaker. Um, you couldn't even see it until I had kind of peeled away some of the leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and remove one more leaf. And then I'm going to go rinse this off. And then we'll come back and cut into this and see what's going on. Okay, so I have rinsed this off, and I just placed it on a big cookie sheet with some paper towels on it. And I've got me a nice big serrated knife. I like to use a big serrated knife when cutting cabbage. Um, I think this is a rated knife. I love rated knives. Um, I use them quite a bit, and they last forever. So I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting into this. And you can hear how crisp it is. This is a really nice head of cabbage here. So we're just going to cut into this and see what is going on inside here. Oh yeah, it looks good in here. Ah, oh, look at that. Pretty. So pretty. Okay, so I've got one big chunk there and then I'm going to go ahead and there's none of those worm holes over here, so I'm going to just go ahead and cut into there. And that's looking good. So I'll turn it over. And there's some of the worm holes, like right there. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and do some cutting kind of away from that. There's a really good chance that there is some worms in here. Uh, now you can soak your cabbage head after you clean it in like a gallon of warm water with salt in it and that helps to um, get bugs and little worms and things out of it but I'm not going to do that today. So I'm just going to set this aside over here with my outer leaves. And I want chunks that are about this size. They are uh, about the size of a, I don't even know, maybe a fourth of a cantaloupe. And I'm just going to try to make them all about the same size. And then I'm going to bring them over here and I'm going to drop them into this boiling water for about two minutes. And I apologize that the phone is kind of jumping around. I only have two hands and I need them both for this. So I am using a neck cradle to hold the phone. And let's just say that it's not easy to hold it still. So I'm going to go over here and drop these into the boiling water. And then I'm going to start my timer for two minutes. Y'all might see a dog 
every once in a while. In one of my videos, we have three of them. And they love to watch what Mama's doing. I live on a farm. And we have a garden and we have farm animals. And so my little dogs are my helpers. So you're likely to see them. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this cook for three minutes. Or two minutes, sorry. And then I'll get back with you. The water is just now coming back to a boil. And I'm going to start counting from now down to two minutes. Okay, it has been almost two minutes. We just have about 15 seconds left. So we're just going to kind of finish this up real quick. And then I'm going to drop it into the ice water that I have over here. And I'm just using a big white plastic bowl that I have. It's actually like a big mixing bowl. And I'm just going to use that. Now if you're shredding your cabbage to using like stir fries and things like that, you're not going to have to blanch it for two minutes. One minute would be fine. We're just doing two minutes to make sure that it kind of gets to the center of the wedges. And it's already smelling so good. I love cooked cabbage. We're having it tonight. I can't wait. I'm going to fry some cabbage with some bacon. And then I'm going to make those fried green tomatoes. And I might just record those. Because I do eat low carb. And of course you can't use regular breading. Can't use flour or panko or anything like that. With the. Uh, when frying your vegetables. So I'm going to. This pan's almost full. Oh, I guess I needed a bigger bowl. But these are really big heads of cabbage, so I guess that's kind of what happened here. So I'm going to just get as much of this into this as I can. And you do need ice water because with these things coming from super hot boiling water, they're going to heat up your water quite a bit. And you want to kind of shock it with that cold water to stop the cooking process. There we go. So I'm going to just take the water off of there for just a second. And you can see every bit of the ice melted on this. Ooh, and the water is hot. It heated the, all of that up. So I'm going to put this. Isn't this a neat little thing? It's got a little hook on there to hang it on to the side of your pan. I love those things. I've had them for years. But I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. Doesn't that look good? I'm going to bring it over here to the sink. And I've got this little spout on my bowl. I'm going to pour this water out. And I'm going to put cold water on it. Try to help cool it down even more. Because you can see the steam still coming off of it. Even though it went into ice water, it just melted all the ice. I'm just going to pour some cold water over there. So I'm going to let this cool for just a second, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but I've added some more ice in here. I rinsed it off a few times with some cold water and then added some more ice. So I'm going to let this go ahead and cool off some more. And then I'm going to dry it and then put it into bags. So as soon as I kind of get it dried out, I'll show you what the bags look like. 
Now here's all the leaves that came off of one of the heads. I don't really have a use for them. Uh, we used to have a pig. We don't have any right now, but if you have a pig, they'd be great for giving to your pigs or uh, using in a compost pile. Otherwise, just throw them away, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, I have emptied the last bowl and added more ice to the water, and I'm getting ready to put this cabbage right here into there. I have started on the second head, and I'm going to have to do like only half of a head at a time because these heads are so large. So I've got half of the other head here and then the other half over there. I'm going to do it in just a moment. But I went ahead and I got the cabbage that was cooled out of the big white bowl and I drained it and I went ahead and put it into some bags. Uh, just I'll show you that right now. So here's my workspace and I've just got some gallon sized freezer bags. And you can see that I've just kind of filled it with the cabbage. I filled it about two thirds of the way full. I'll have it this full for a meal of like fried cabbage. And this is about half a head. And then I've got a bag that's about half full. And this will be used for soup where I'll be adding some other ingredients to it. But I'm gonna let it um, sit there for just a moment and I'm gonna try to drain a little more of the water out and then I will get the air out and seal them. But I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. I'm gonna do the this half and then, whoops, this half and then both of these. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I'm not gonna put you through all of that. So I'll just pause it for now and I will come back when I'm finished. Catch you guys in a bit. Just to let you know, don't expect to do this and not make a mess. I have spilled stuff everywhere. I have gotten grass and all kinds of little leaf parts and everything all over the floor over here. My table is a wreck. Check this out. I just finished my last head and I've got this big mess but right now I've got these bags I'm gonna let these cool off a little more and then I'm going to put them in the fridge and let them get cold before I put them in the freezer I'm gonna to try to get as much water as I can out just so that they have less of a chance of freezer burn but I've got one head in the a uh, bowl over there cooling and then the last half of the last head in the pot. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. Um, I hope that this was helpful. Just make sure whenever you go to clean, um, to close up your bags uh, that you get as much moisture out of it as you can, as much air out of it as you can, and then uh, try to make the bags as flat as you can just because whatever shape it freezes in is the shape that you're stuck with until you go to use it. So uh, just don't expect for this process to be something that's not going to make a mess. Um, this is total chaos. But it'll be worth it for the yummy yummy nums. Trust me, it will be worth it. So if any of you have questions, feel free to ask and I'll see you next time. So while working on this, I went to put more ice into my cool down bowl and I was not thinking and I put ice into the boiling pot yeah this is real life y'all look I've even made a mess on my stove that's where stuff's like boiled over yeah there's no camera tricks here y'all this is real life this is what you can kind of expect when you're doing anything at home in your kitchen so anyway hope y'all have a wonderful day bye Just need to label and throw them in the freezer.